Ready to go, George? I think he's ready. Sawmill friends, me and George are headed to Harbor Freight this morning to go buy a new toolbox for the wood shop. We got some really good weather today, and I'm going to try to get the excavator out and do some work on the driveway. All right, friends, we got the toolbox down to the shop and I think I will fool with that later. Right now we need to take advantage of this weather. It's really nice out here today. It's about 60 degrees. And we're gonna get the excavator out and instead of working on the driveway, which I thought about doing today, I think we'll go down to the log yard and start sorting some pine and see what's usable and what's not. I've got a decent size of pine down there. It's been on the ground for about a year and I bet half of it's probably went bad. Let's go sort through it. I got a bunch of white pine down there that a tree service brought about eight or nine months ago. Some of it had been on the ground at their log yard before they brought it over here. And I bet half of it's probably gonna be firewood or bonfire wood. I can't burn pine in my wood stove there, although some people do. They say it's bad for the chimney or the pipe rather. What do you guys think about that? I've always heard that pine is bad for a fireplace, but I could be wrong. I know, before you guys start complaining in the comment sections, I'm with you. I need to get rid of that beeping noise. It does it. It doesn't matter if I go forwards or backward, it beeps. There's probably a fuse or something that I can pull to get rid of that noise. It's getting old pretty fast. So this is mostly white pine. And like I said, it came from a tree service. Most of it was down for a decent amount of time before it made its way over here. And a lot of it is gonna go to the burn pile more than likely. That looks really bad right there. But I need to work through it because there's probably some decent saw logs in here. I just need to get them out of this pile where I can look at them better. I got a two foot bucket on the excavator today. And with the thumb, that right there should be a good tool to pull these logs out where we can take a better look at them. This will also be some good practice. This is only the third time I've ran this machine.
you seasoned operators out there have to look over me. I'm a rookie when it comes to excavators, but I'll learn, I'll get faster. I got some of these pulled out of here. That one right there is really bad on that end. A lot of rot going on. I'm not sure how far that goes up. Wouldn't doubt me if the whole log is pretty much a waste. And this one here, the first one we pulled out, it may be decent. It's just really hard to tell. I got my chainsaw down here. We'll come in here on the end and start doing some prospecting. We'll do some cuts and check out the end grain and see what's worth saving. And then the rest of it will go to the burn pile. guys that log is actually in decent shape right there there's a little bit of rot right there and over here near the bark nice and solid in the middle not too bad let's see how long this one is i got a 25 foot tape i should have got my loggers tape so just shy of 20 foot not too bad actually I thought it'd be rotten in the middle. There is one defect that I see on the outside. These knot clusters right here. It looks like there's knot clusters every uh, four feet. So that's just a part of the course as far as our pine goes here in Northeast Tennessee. This is white pine. It probably came from a residential neighborhood, somebody's front or backyard. And that's why there's so many knots on it. But I just want to tell you this, guys, this log was free. This whole pile of pine was free, came from a tree service. And even though it looks terrible on the outside, we'll still get something out of this. Still rotten in the middle. This entire log is going to be going to the burn pile more than likely.
right guys, that's going pretty well, except for my GoPro camera, it overheated. I had to go put some new batteries in it. It's always something with these cameras. So we've sorted three logs so far. That's the rotten one, as you can tell, looks terrible. That's waste, and that part is waste also. I cut the other end down there off camera, because the camera overheated, and it was rotten down there also. And this one was laying on top of it, and it is rotten as well. Whenever you take your chainsaw and you put it into a rotten log and you're not sure if it's rotten or not, you know it instantly. The bar just sinks right through that log. It's like hot butter. It makes you think you're the best chainsaw sharpener in the world, but that's usually not the case. It's usually rotten. You'll go right through it, guys. It's just so fast. And once you do it one time, you'll always know what it feels like when you got a rotten log in your log yard. Now this little system we got going is working pretty good. It's just gonna take me a while. There's probably 20 pine logs in here that need sorted. It's just gonna take me a little bit to get it done. But so far, it's working pretty good. I should have done this a long time ago, but the excavator wasn't here. It makes these things a whole lot easier. So out of those first three logs, we're running on about a 33% success rate. The first log was decent. We got two 10 footers out of it. And those other two are going straight to the burn pile. Now I'm going to try to get my thumb up there around that top one. That's a pretty good size one right there and see if we can uh, roll it on down the pile here and take a look at it. Well, that thumb is extremely strong on this machine. Has no trouble gripping something and not letting go. See if I can swing this one out of the way. Still kind of nervous with this machine, guys. I'm not sure how much weight I can put on it without it getting kind of tipsy on me. You seasoned operators are probably sitting there making fun of me right now. I probably would too. Now, this one on the top has potential to have a decent eight foot saw log on it. Maybe 10. See if I can roll it down here. We can take a better look at it. There we go. I tell you what guys, doing this with an excavator is a whole lot easier than trying to get in here with a grapple and sort through this mess. Got some little ones on the very top. Go ahead and pull them off there. Now hopefully, we might be able to get an eight footer out of this one. Maybe. And this is not a good position, guys, to butt this log. When I make my cut right here, since it's up off the ground, it will try to pinch my saw. So therefore, if you run into a situation like this, I'm gonna show you how to get out of it. You cut down about two thirds of the way, and once you start seeing the timber, close up on your bar you pull it out and start from underneath and come up with it and when you get close to your line that you stop cutting from on the top pull out your bar and usually the weight of the log will finish the cut for you if it don't keep going and as soon as you get right there on it you got to pull that saw out as fast as you can once you do it two or three times it's pretty easy 
Now having said all that, I'll probably mess up on this and get my bar trapped in this log. That's the way it usually goes. Well, thank goodness that worked out pretty good. After I was sitting there bragging on myself, it usually goes the other way for me. So, nice and solid, good deal. I was wondering when you was gonna show up down here. Where you been all day, mama? Look at her, it ignores me, but stays with me all the time. You gonna talk to your fans? Maybe later? Okay, maybe later. All right, guys, the sun is going down, so it looks like I'm done in the log yard for the day. I could work a little bit longer, but I couldn't video it because these cameras do terrible in low light situations. It's just part of it. And I'm going to stop anyways because my wife just called and dinner's ready. And guess what we're having tonight? Scrambled eggs, bacon, and pancakes. That's right, people. Over in Tennessee, we like to have breakfast for dinner sometimes. And if you've never done it before, you might want to try it. It's pretty good. So I'm going to run up to the house and get some dinner, and I'll be right back. We'll head to the wood shop and get that new toolbox uncrated. I'll see you guys here in just a minute. All right, guys, I'm back from dinner, and those pancakes were delicious. It's hard to beat breakfast for dinner, guys. Try it. You will not regret it. Let's go over here now and get this toolbox out and take a look at it. This is called a full bank service cart. And I had the exact same one up at the mechanic shop I bought about two months ago. And if you're wondering why I bought one of these for the woodworking shop, I'll explain that here in just a minute. I can't remember if the wheels were on this thing or not. And my goodness, it's heavy. Uh, nope, the wheels are not on it. I sure wish Harbor Freight would put the wheels on these toolboxes. It'd make it a lot easier for me. There we go. Now this is not sponsored by Harbor Freight. I bought this today with my own money. It's usually $5.99, but I had a coupon for $100 off, so I got it for $4.99. Pretty good value in these toolboxes. I think Harbor Freight does a good job on their toolboxes nowadays. For the price, they're hard to beat. One thing I really like about these toolboxes is there's a lock and an unlock button for your drawers. So on a lot of toolboxes, you gotta keep this open to get your drawers to open. That's kind of silly. This is really nice to have so you don't have to open this up all the time. Usually they put the wheels in the drawer. There they are. Push bar and the casters. So in order to put the wheels on, I'm gonna to have to tilt this thing on its side. Put these four by fours down, keep it off the floor. All right, friends, I'm not gonna bore you guys to death watching me put casters on the toolbox, so. I'll see you back here in just a minute. All right, guys, got the casters installed and everything else. And now let me show you what we're gonna be storing in this toolbox. 
my everyday user hand planes. And this right here is my favorite one, maybe out of all the ones I have. This right here is a Stanley number five jack plane. I use this plane on everything that I build. It's one of my favorites. Now I used to, up until today, put all my hand tools in my Anarchist tool chest that I built a few years ago. And I've showed it to you guys on previous videos. I think one of the first videos I ever did on YouTube was actually showing that chest and what's inside of it. And the tool chest actually works fine. There's no issues with it. It keeps moisture out. There's plenty of room for storage, but there's one problem that I have with it. And let me show you. So here's my problem, guys. This is the tool chest. It's got two nice little uh, teals right here at the top. And these work just fine. My main problem is my hand planes, all my joinery planes, everything is in the very bottom. And they're kind of hard to get to and it makes it a hassle to get to them sometimes. And I have so many down there, sometimes when I grab one, it kind of hits the one beside it. And these hand planes are easy to chip, friends. But the biggest problem, I guess, for me is the bending over all the time. I have a terrible lower back that I don't talk about on this channel a whole lot. And anytime I can get away from bending over a lot during the day, I try to get away from it. And this right here, guys, is just, as far as the ergonomics goes, it's terrible for my body type. I'm gonna keep it though. I'll store other things in it that I don't use a whole lot. No way I would get rid of this. It was one of my first ever woodworking projects that I completed, but it's just not working anymore. I need to get those hand tools up where I can get to them. One thing I already changed on this toolbox, there's holes on both sides all the way down through there for pry bars. I got some painter's tape temporarily and put over that. And not because I don't wanna have stuff fall through there, it's because I don't want moisture or anything coming up from underneath the toolbox into this cabinet part right here. I want all the moisture out, that way no rust will develop on my hand planes. So I have two ways to fight moisture with this box. Number one was sealing it up really well. And number two is these little pouches right here. Now these are little air dryers. And the reason I like these is because this blue right here will turn pink when it's time to put this in the microwave and get the moisture out of it. I got one of these in my tool chest. I got one of these in my toolbox up at the other shop, but I've never had a problem with moisture since I've been using these. I get these on Amazon and I'll save you the hassle of trying to find them. There's a link down below in the description if you want to go check them out. They're pretty cheap. Three in a box is maybe $20. And I also have a few of these in my gun safe also. They work really good. And the reason I favor these over other methods for keeping moisture out is because of that color right there. As soon as that turns pink, you put it in the microwave and, and you're good to go. And it has the instructions right there on the back every time. So you always know what to do. Works really good. All right, friends, I think I'm done for the night. I'll probably spend the next hour or two moving all the tools from the tool chest into this one and putting one of these in all the drawers. But in closing, I want to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody on Patreon for supporting me here in the channel. I really appreciate you guys. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. We're going to get started on a wood pile bright and early and get that cleared out, then move on to something else. Mm -hmm.